Hello. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, good morning. Hi to everyone, uh, wherever you are joining us today. Um, thank you for your time and attention uh, as you join us for the latest installment of the GMF webinar series. This month's webinar is about how to start the conversation about circular economy in your com community. Uh, if you're new to the GMF webinar series, welcome. This series occurs once a month at, at the last Thursday of the month, uh, taking place at 1 Eastern time. Each installment is an introduction to one of our initiatives or sectors meant to inform and inspire you to take action locally and eventually initiate projects in your own community. Uh, my name is Jesse Granger, Knowledge Management and Learning Officer with the Green Municipal Funds Capacity Development Team. Uh, I'm here today with my colleague, Kiana Simmons, uh, Project Coordinator, who will be doing all of our behind the scenes producer work, and Catherine Lorio, our Waste and Water Sector Lead, and I'll be passing the mic over to her in, in just a couple minutes to bring us through an introduction uh, to circular economy. Before we go any further, I'd like to take a moment on behalf of FCM uh, by beginning this session by acknowledging that I am joining you from the lands that have been inhabited by Indigenous peoples for thousands of years. We at FCM recognize the Algonquin Anishinaabe people as their traditional custodians of the land upon which we at FCM offices are located and where I sit today. We also recognize the contributions of the Métis, Inuit, and all First Nations peoples, both in shaping and strengthening this community and country as a whole. Uh, wherever you are, please join me in taking a few minutes to pay our respect to the original stewards of this land and committing ourselves to thoughts and actions that will lead to meaningful reconciliation wherever we live now. Thank you. And next slide, please. Before we start, um, I just want to bring your attention to a couple housekeeping items. Um, firstly and foremost, today we have presentations taking place in both languages, which means unless you're fluently bilingual, you'll want to join me now in clicking the interpretation button in the lower right of your screen. So it looks like a little globe here, um, it's in the lower right. And if you click on that, two options will show up, English or French. So please select the language of your choice. And throughout the webinar, you'll want to stay in that channel. Um, as the presenters and speakers, we will be switching between languages. However, if you're in the French channel or the English channel, you, the interpreter, will adjust to ensure that you receive all the information in your primary language. So we'll do our best to kind of prompt back and forth throughout. Um, and also special thanks to our amazing interpreter, Juliet, who we'll all be hearing at some point today, um, who will be working very hard behind the scenes to, to make it all happen. Uh, we have four presenters today. Each has prepared about a 10 minute presentation to share so what we're going to do is run through the presentations one after the other, um, and we'll use our remaining time at the end for any kind of questions, answers, and discussion. Um, you'll notice there is a question and answer box in your bottom menu sort of to the left-hand side. Um, so that Q&A spot is really a, a place to, to pop in your questions. And um, we'll do our best as well throughout the presentations and in the background to answer those questions, um, if they can be done quickly through chat. So please feel free to submit your questions at any time. Um, there is also the chat box. Um, so we prefer that you use that chat box if you want to share links or relevant information, if you have something to add, or if you have any kind of technical questions, um, Kiana will be watching that channel and, uh, and will be available to kind of help you out in that. Uh, next slide, please. For, for today's agenda, um, as I said before, I'll be passing the mic uh, momentarily to my colleague, Catherine Lorio, who will give you an introduction to the circular economy um, and why do we talk about it. Um, and then we'll move into our, our more formal presentations. So we have Stephanie Hude from La Ville de Chapa, uh, Lindsay Milne 
from York Region and Hélène Gervais from Rissic, Quebec. So we'll go through those presentations one by one, and then we have our question answer period at the end. Um, so if you uh, are, if you want to listen in to this um, in English, Catherine will be presenting in French. So um, this is an opportunity to kind of join me in clicking the interpretation button down at the bottom and selecting your English channel as we move over to our French presenter. And uh, without further ado, Catherine, over to you. Merci. Donc, bonjour. Bienvenue à tous et à toutes. De... Thank you very much. Welcome, everyone, for this uh, uh, webinar on the uh, waste sector. I'm a, an advisor for the Green Municipal Fund uh, dealing with the waste and uh, water. So this uh, sector, uh, uh, we recognize that we'll be um, dealing with the waste and to promote circular economy with the municipalities so that in your municipality, it be a conversation that starts or or continues in, in order to uh, uh, go towards a uh, transition uh, towards a circular economy in Canada. Why do we talk about uh, circular economy? Uh, we'll talk about this, but this just uh, uh, an introduction to this concept, and then I'll let uh, the presenters from the different municipalities uh, and from Rusic Quebec, they will show you examples and, and show you what it could look like when we talk about circular economy in Canada. So, uh, uh, right now, the economic model that was uh, developed in the last few years, uh, and actually during the last century throughout the work, is an economic model that uh, includes uh, taking uh, natural resources, make products, and so on, and then uh, throw them out when they are not used anymore. So, this model is uh, very present still, but uh, this uh, produces a, a lot of waste. There's the, um, a lot of problems with waste in the municipalities. They have to be managed and it has to be uh, disposed of uh, the more efficiently possible. But this is a linear model and it is not uh, good at all. And it uh, uh, includes a lot of waste and, and pollutions and, and um, goods that have to be disposed of. So this is uh, an illustration of this uh, model. Uh, we take a lot of resources from the earth, from the ecosystems, the territories, and, and, and our buildings as well. And we have to um, have uh, incineration or, or other ways to dispose of um, waste. Uh, and cities and towns have to manage uh, this uh, this waste. So why are we talking about this linear economy that is not sustainable? And it's in order to transition towards a future that is more uh, sustainable and more uh, environmentally uh, uh, responsible. So we want to have an economic model that would be circular. So we start with a linear model and we go towards a, a circular model. There won't be uh, any need to um, take more resources and it will be uh, uh, better if we don't take as many uh, resources. We can use the ones that are already uh, there in the economy and, and in the uh, communities right now. So this will allow the territories uh, uh, to uh, regenerate. We can protect uh, the different ecosystems and we can uh, maximize the resources that are already uh, circulating in the economies. It can be uh, goods and produce and products, uh, any kind of uh, material. We can talk about building infrastructures. How can we use them um, in the best way uh, possible in the uh, on the long uh, on the long run? So this was uh, would it 
also uh, significantly reduce greenhouse uh, gas emissions uh, we uh, use and, and, and repair. So this is a circular way of treating um, uh, materials. This kind of economy is, is new. The circular economy will be good for municipalities as well. They won't have not as many, uh, as much waste to uh, deal with, and it could create jobs uh, and also create um, new uh, relationships, business relationships, or resources that would remain in the uh, municipality for. Uh, a long time, and that could be uh, beneficial for uh, the municipality and its residents. And so what is the circular economy? It's a production exchange and consumption system that optimizes the use of resources. And it's for a place so rather than taking new uh, resources, we uh, recycle, repair, uh, sell again the resources so that they become resources for other users. This is a graph that was produced by the EDEC Institute in Quebec. This is the first one you saw was from the uh, Circular Innovation Council. There's a, a few uh, definitions for the, this circular economy. And you can see that we uh, rather have uh, uh, these uh, circles of uh, extraction, transformation, distribution, and utilization. What you see here, it's a way to show the different strategies that you could uh, implement in your collectivity in order to encourage or, or develop uh, this circularity in a one particular place. How can we start talking about circular economy on a territory? There are several ways to start. You have to remember the goal. It's to use these uh, resources as long as possible. In order to do this, there are several ways in different sectors uh, for uh, operation and services in our municipalities. But the first thing that municipalities uh, do is to uh, rethink uh, um, the use uh, you could have uh, of, of, of waste. And you'll see with the different presentations how the municipalities uh, implemented this circular economy in their uh, community. We want to reach uh, zero waste. We want to promote a, a sharing economy. There's uh, renting services rather than buying goods we could encourage uh, products and services be used uh, longer and on a uh, bigger frequency. You encourage uh, re repairs and, and renovating rather than thinking about uh, uh, bearing waste or uh, things like that. It could be uh, a different strategy to have a, a plan or a, a sustainable uh, procurement for um, municipal administrations. There are towns, cities, territories that have started to uh, establish roadmaps. This is a plan, an idea that is uh, emerging in one uh, community. This is a, a roadmap towards a circular um, economy. So I'll uh, let uh, Stephanie uh, Wood, uh, uh, the Strategic Development Assistant with the Chapa Economic Development Corporation. She uh, belongs to a, a network of a circular economy in Canada, and they developed a roadmap on a circular economy for uh, their uh, municipality in Chape. She'll talk about how it went and what it looks like uh, uh, this uh, circular economy. So here is Stephanie. Thank you very much, Catherine. Uh, hello, everybody. I will share my screen as soon as I'm able to. Great. So 
So you should be able to see the right thing. Yes. OK. So today I will talk about circular uh, economy and the transition that we had in Chape. My name is Stephanie Oud. I'm uh, the strategic development assistant with the Chape Economic Development Corporation. And I am the one who has been uh, in charge uh, of the um, implementation of our roadmap within the municipality. Today, my presentation will have four uh, parts. I will uh, introduce Chape, then I will give you the uh, historical context, and then I'll talk about the uh, roadmap. And then I will present the keys to success to start on a transition and a conversation about circular economy. So Chape, is a town in the north of Quebec. It's not Quebec that you see here. It's the region with Chibay James. That's where we are. And it's really north of the 49th parallel. So it's really northern Quebec. This municipality is far away from other centers. The closest town is about uh, 45 kilometers away um, and Montreal is uh, around 700 kilometers. So we're very far from big centers. The population is 1,600 people and we have about 50 uh, businesses, institutions and so on on our um, territory. A little history. We were incorporated in 1955. It was a Opemiska copper mine and the uh, city was uh, founded according to the mining act and this uh, opemiska uh, mine was the uh, the one who uh, allowed uh, this place to be founded so we diversified and opened a barrage chape in 75 and this uh, uh, made that the population grew to uh, 3500 inhabitants in 1991 the uh, mine closed and the social structure was unbalanced so we had to diversify and, and find other ways because uh Barret chapa is the only uh, industry so in 95 we managed to diversify and opened chape energy this is a co-generation um, uh, company, they use biomass from the forestry industry to create electricity and steam. So what I want to say is that in 95, we were always uh, already seeing circular economy. It wasn't called that way in 95, but it's just to let you know that it's been a while that we talk about this in, uh, in Chape. In 2008, it's the first time that the uh, we had the Chape Green City vision. We had an uh, environmental plan, and we wanted to reduce waste, uh, to have energy efficiency, and uh, uh, pollution elimination. So it's been um, about 15 years that, that we talk about this uh, with the um, councillors and uh, the city. So we, in 2013, we started the strategic planning and this really put forward the uh, vision, uh, uh, Chape Green City, and, and we wanted to become a leader in steam utilization and to uh, really uh, improve uh, energy. So as of uh, 2016, there were different companies involved in industrial symbiosis and valorization, in, including uh, Bore. Uh, a Canada and the blue greenhouses, the uh, uh, granule uh, set 777 uses the biomass of Barret Chape for its pellet production. So in uh, 2021, we continued the uh, actions uh, towards the economy roadmap. I won't go into uh, the too much details, but uh, you can go to our website and we'll put the link in the chat box. 
there are four main themes, industrial symbiosis. We want to go even further. There's already industrial symbiosis, but we want to go further in that domain. Then uh, buildings and institutions, infrastructures. We chose this because the majority uh, of these uh, uh, building and structures uh, dated from the beginning of the mine. We chose uh, responsible uh, procurement and also supporting education. And this uh, brings uh, me to my uh, success uh, uh, keys. So I'm just uh, showing this as a, a, a pyramid for the needs. But these are my keys, but there's other ones. Uh, first of all, that I wanted to talk about is to uh, you have to develop a vision. It's really important to, to have this kind of vision and to know where you want to go, or, or at least to have an idea of what we want to go. And it's OK, it takes time to uh, develop that vision. The first time we talked about an uh, environmental vision, it was in 2008, and circular economy was new. We started talking about it in 2016, 17. So it takes time to define your vision, but it's extremely uh, important in, in order to go forward. And of course, uh, there will be an evolution. Then, in order to finish uh, with the vision, you have to uh, communicate this with the municipality, not only the elected people or the uh, manager, uh, they have that vision, but it's important also to, uh, to, to, to work on communication. Uh, I could have uh, called that communication. This is another key for success. And then the second one, uh, the second key is to talk about it. If we had not said in Chape that we wanted to be a green city, that we wanted to be a circular uh, city, and we wanted uh, all this, we would not have known that was a, an initiative for circular regions. It's a partner that shared this information. So it's very, very important to talk about the vision that you uh, developed. And that's why I say it's a pyramid, because you have to talk about the vision, to talk about wanting to do a transition, talk to uh, other people, also inform, educate, uh, explain what it is and, and why you want to do that transition. This is not a transition that you'll do on your own. So it's important to talk about it and to, to have uh, different uh, partners. So the third key is to uh, really find people that are ready to bring on changes uh, within the municipality. This is not a transition that you'll make on your own. And in our case, to give you an example, we just uh, uh, read on our um, uh, management for um, the, the waste management uh, plan. So in order to do this and to include concepts uh, of uh, circular economy for uh, reselling and renting and so on. So maybe you should um, uh, go to the website and, and see what we did. We had a, uh, a company that was specialized in this that worked with us. So you have to have uh, collaboration. It's extremely important. So this is the third key. And the last key for success is to uh, go ahead. It seems very simple, but to first of all, start with the little uh, uh, actions. It doesn't have to be uh, complicated. It goes, you know, one step at a time. So uh, this is what concludes my presentation today. If there's one thing to remember is that no matter where you are at right now, you can do it. We've been working on this for 30 years, so you can do it one step at a time and everything will be fine. Thank you. Whoops, I will stop this. Thank you. Thank you very much. Congratulations uh, for this uh, management uh, plan. This is uh, uh, a big uh, step forward. So congratulations. I will uh, have uh, Lindsay uh, take the microphone and Jessie will uh, introduce her. You'll see that we're going to change uh, languages as well. 
Thank you for that, Catherine. I mean, my introduction is going to be very quick just to say that we have Lindsay Milne joining us next. She's the manager of waste management um, and environmental, um, sorry, not my screen is covered. I'll let her finish it in. Sorry about that, Lindsay. Um, but she is located in York region. So um, with that, take it away. Okay, I'm assuming everybody can see my screen okay? Yes, we can. Great, thank you. Um, so hello everyone. Um, thank you very much for the opportunity to share our circular economy work with you today. Before I begin, I just want to acknowledge that I'm coming to you from the York region in the traditional territory of many Indigenous peoples such as the Ashinaabe and Haudenosaunee. Uh, Huron-Wendat and Métis peoples, and the treaty territories of the Haudenosaunee, Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, and Williams Treaties First Nations. York Region is located within the boundaries of the Nanvan Treaty, Treaty 13, and the Williams Treaties. There are also other land claims and treaty rights involving portions of York Region that have not been resolved. The Chippewas of Georgina Island First Nation is a Williams Treaty First Nation, and the closest First Nation community to York Region. So as, uh, as I was being introduced there, my name is um, Lindsay Milne, and I'm the manager at York Region of the Waste Management Team. So it's pretty straightforward and, and simple. Um, we are leading the circular economy work at York Region as it aligns with our Waste Management Master Plan. And today I'll touch on how we started our journey, our most recent work in creating a roadmap for our community, and what our next steps are. So just first, a little bit about the region. Uh, we're a regional municipality and we're composed of nine local towns and cities. We're the third largest municipality in Ontario and one of the fastest growing. We have a diverse population and a landscape that includes urban and rural areas and active farming community. We provide a range of services, many of them in partnership with our local towns and cities, and our council is very progressive when it comes to waste and environmental issues and have been supportive of our work. So just a little bit of background. In 2013, the region and local municipalities completed our first waste management master plan. As you can see on the screen there, we call it the smart living plan. And it has a focus on waste reduction, reuse, and we've targeted the reduction in food waste and garbage generation from households in our community. Over the first five years, we established community partnerships to encourage residents to reduce food waste, divert textiles, repair broken items and extend their useful life and borrow household items at local libraries. So it was a lot of piloting um, and continuous improvement over the years. In 2020, we updated our master plan with some lessons learned from those early years of work. The new plan stayed the course with a focus on waste reduction, but also added the objective to focus on circular economy opportunities and how it could align with other regional and community priorities in the hopes of attracting more partners and engaging more citizens. So to begin implementing this new work, we are looking at how we can leverage the region's operations to lead and demonstrate circular economy practices, as well as integrate circular thinking into broader policies and programs delivered across the corporation, included into the, visions, the visionary goals for 2051. So there's a lot of great work that was already happening in the region. Here we just have a few examples up on this slide, which includes our recently built LEED Gold certified, sorry, standard regional office building that encouraged recycled content and resource efficiency during construction as well as in the operations. We also found examples where local businesses are offering waste-free alternatives, as well as community organizations and libraries working with us on reduction and reuse programming. So the key question is, and still is for us, what are the best opportunities for a municipality to support development of circular activities in our community? So we've been using this framework up on the screen um, for municipal policy levers developed by the Ellen MacArthur Foundation in our stakeholder engagement to illustrate circular economy and spark ideas on how changes to our operations and policies can support circularity. 
we were very lucky to be able to participate in the Circular Cities and Regions Initiative led by FCM, National Zero Waste Council and Recycling Council of Alberta and Recycle Quebec, which really helped advance our knowledge in this area. We connected with over 50 staff from across the region through workshops and engaged with hundreds of staff through presentations at team, branch and leadership meetings. By sharing the good work that we were already doing, stakeholders started to think of their own lines of business and how they could infuse circular thinking into their day to day operations. This same approach was taken through three virtual workshops with new and existing community partners. These partners started to share insights on how they thought the region could advance circular economy, thinking into the community, and participants included school boards, nonprofits, businesses, and environmental groups. So reviewing all this input that we gathered through the, the workshops that we received, um, best practices as well as expert advice through the CCR program, several opportunities and themes emerged. So that helped us to build out the circular economy roadmap. Ideas were evaluated based on alignment with corporate priorities, readiness of key stakeholders, and a potential to make an impact at a regional scale. Five cross-cutting areas were identified and are included in the roadmap document. These two actions will focus on opportunities to embed circularity within our own departments. So we wanted to start with asset management and procurement. We will be looking at how these policies in, um, in these focus areas can be updated to support more circularity and what further research baseline data is needed to evaluate opportunities and track impacts. We have three community focused action areas that were also identified. So expanding on our existing food waste reduction work by looking at ways to support circular food economy across the value chain. And we will continue to work with community partners to create more opportunities for you, reuse and sharing. And finally, we heard that increasing awareness of circular economy and its benefits will help more organizations take advantage of circular opportunities in their own work. So this will include our continued delivery of a circular economy initiatives fund program, as well as establishment of a circular economy community working group, which is going to be composed of local experts acting as advisors and champions within the community. So for next steps, our roadmap was just approved by Regional Council. As this is a municipal election year, we are working internally on strategic planning and budget for the next term of Council. So as I mentioned on the previous slide, we will establish a working group to help champion circular economy in different sectors, plan future stakeholder engagement and share learnings. We've been developing our work plan to launch with internal staff with other stakeholders as well. And this includes conducting a waste based study across departments, working with small businesses to reduce single use plastics and working with other departments, including public health to plan our post COVID approach on food waste reduction. So this is the link that you can use and find our roadmap document, as well as information on some of the other programs that I've mentioned coming out of our waste management master plan. So with that, I just want to thank you for your time today and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you so much for that presentation, Lindsay. I like um, seeing the common theme between the two presentations so far of really um, seeing what the community needs and doing that assessment of what kind of circular economy conversations are already taking place and then building from that. And it's so interesting to see how um, within one topic of circular economy, two municipalities are, are taking it with similar and, and different um, different directions. So thank you so much for that. If you do have any questions um, for other of our presenters thus far, please dump them into the, the Q&A chat box and we'll, get, we'll have time for questions at the end. Um, without uh, further ado, I'll introduce Helen Gervais. It's in, she is the Industrial Development Officer with RISIC Quebec, and they've also been doing quite a bit of work um, supporting the circular economy and have developed a toolkit that she'll be um, chatting about and sharing with us today. So, um, Helen, whenever you're ready. Perfect, thank you. Uh, so, let's share the screen. Est-ce que vous pouvez me confirmer que tout fonctionne? 
Can you confirm that everything is fine? Yeah, it's okay. Hello, everyone. I'm really happy to be here today with you in order to introduce uh, this toolbox uh, that we prepared. Uh, this is for a regional uh, circular economy uh, roadmap uh, toolkit. Um, uh, when you talk about uh, circular economy, as uh, uh, Catherine mentioned, we talk about short local loops when you say local, you say municipal. So um, municipalities have the ideal level of governance to deploy the circular economy. The economic model where they are citizens, organizations uh, uh, are interested in, we think that it's good to, to provide a, a toolkit. Rather, before presenting this, what is a roadmap in a circular economy? It's like an action plan that a city, a region can have in order to provide a strategic direction to make the transition towards a circular economy. This is a framework to have a cross-cutting vision of a territory. We have a regional vision, we have a strategic strategic directions and, and also indicators. Like Stephanie said, it doesn't, it is not easy. Yeah, you cannot do it on your own. So you have to really involve uh, the whole of the territory's uh, stakeholders. They also already have uh, some uh, projects. We should not uh, reinvent the, the wheel. This is a, a cross-cutting uh, uh, strategy and also, we uh, choose uh, to work with uh, what is already uh, being done. So it really uh, uh, takes a, a link uh, between uh, all of these elements. So this uh, toolkit uh, comes from uh, different regions that uh, got into contact with us because they wanted to have a roadmap in a circular economy. So we uh, granted a mandate to the Centre de Transfert Technologique en Ecologie Industrielle and the uh, CREDO, which is uh, the Regional uh, Council for Environment and uh, Sustainable uh, Development in Outaouais, and also for the capital uh, region. So this was launched uh, last June and it's uh, available on our website. There's a guide and uh, 15 adaptable tools that can correspond to your needs, your reality and this methodology has five stages and you can see that on the screen there are two phases the first one is to develop the roadmap and then to implement it for development uh, the process lasts uh, about a year but it really depends on your context and your reality for each of the steps, we talk about two to six months for each uh, stage. So for planning, we uh, want to have the project the team set up. We have the, to uh, strike the different committees uh, or identify all um, the stakeholders. We have to talk about budget uh, and uh, timetable. So we have to really prepare the success of our project. Then the regional uh, portrait, uh, we consult, uh, uh, we have questionnaires, uh, focus groups uh, uh, to see where we are and what is, uh, um, what is needed. So we have a territorial diagnosis. Third point, we have the vision and objectives uh, what indicators uh, we need, objectives, and, and, and this is uh, then the implementation reprioritize actions to be implemented. We launched uh, the roadmap. We are very happy uh, that this uh, step is done, and then we communicate everything, and, and, and then we are really in the implementation. Then last stage is uh, evaluation and evolution. This is uh, uh, done. Um, as we go, we always try to uh, improve. And, and this is not uh, static. This uh, roadmap has to uh, uh, be uh, adjusted uh, over time. So this is really a good idea of the five steps. I'll show you a table that 
shows you how the guide and the toolkit are structured. So there are five uh, steps and you have the different activities and then there's sub activities. And for uh, some of them, there are tools uh, attached and then you can uh, uh, obtain them. So this guide will support you uh, step by step in all these uh, stages, uh, no matter where you are talking about the guide. I wanted to uh, show you uh, how um, it is set up. So for instance, here, there's a step we uh, talk about the objectives and also who has to be involved at this stage. What is, what is the load? Uh, uh, what are the activities, sub-activities and, and tools associated with this? Another element that you will find in the guide is what you see here. For instance, on the left-hand side, there are tips on how to involve stakeholders, how to deal with communication in order to uh, give you all the uh, possibilities to succeed. For one activity, we will answer what, who, uh, how, and uh, why and how. So there's different uh, uh, elements and also uh, links uh, that will uh, provide you with uh, some tips. So we try to uh, uh, give as much as we can and it's free. So you will have everything you uh, need in the guide. It will be, you will be able to see where you are and, 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 and try to uh, adjust what you need. For tools, I wanted to show you a few examples. Uh, here you have uh, three of them on the top, on the left-hand side, this uh, uh, tool allows you to uh, uh, prepare the right structure and the committees, subcommittees, their roles and responsibilities. So it will give you uh, the right kind of information in order to uh, start uh, the whole thing. Uh, on the top right, you have an Excel uh, sheet in order to identify uh, all the different uh, elements uh, for the municipalities, who's involved, who's not. So you have a, a good uh, idea of the uh, stakeholders. And then you have uh, this uh, PowerPoint presentation that we have in order to explain the circular economy with the examples. Uh, I uh, will uh, encourage you to adapt uh, these examples according to your particular uh, regions. And it would be uh, interesting to communicate what is being done in your region. In the second step, this is the regional uh, portrait. So there's a questionnaire for uh, industries and, and businesses, but also for economic development uh, uh, companies. So you can also send this to other stakeholders in your region. So it provides you with a good idea of what's being done, what are the needs, what the resources are already there um, in your region. So you will have this uh, territorial diagnostic in circular economy. We uh, provide this model in order to uh, do uh, this model. Talking about the model, there's another one for a uh, regional uh, roadmap in a circular economy with the different sections and all of these uh, have activities uh, that could be uh, found in the toolkit. So all of this is available uh, online. You have the uh, website uh, contact. Uh, you go to municipality, click on circular economy and you will go directly to this uh, particular page where we explain things about the toolkit and then you will find all the links to download the guide and all the different tools. You can also uh, download uh, the whole uh, toolkit with the zip. And we started uh, the uh, translation into English because right now it's only available in French but the guide and five uh, very important tools will be uh, translated and it will be available in October or November. So we're really looking forward to sharing all of this. And if you use the toolkit, I would be really interested in hearing uh, your uh, comments on, on this uh, toolkit. So I'll be very happy to uh, uh, talk to you. I'm uh, available for questions if you have any.
Thank you very much, Hélène. This is a great toolkit and a great presentation. It's easy to uh, use and it, it seems uh, uh, full of tips and resources. And uh, talking about uh, resource uh, at the Green Municipal Fund, we have uh, this is the presentation of resources uh, for GMF, and this is uh, available for you. And we want to talk about what's available for municipalities or partners or um, charities, uh, municipalities, partners. This will probably answer one of the questions that we have uh, uh, received during the presentation at the GMF. We have uh, financial support with the loans and, and grants for projects in the waste sector. And uh, there's uh, this kind of initiatives for circular economy would be uh, um, it could be chosen for these grants. There are uh, feasibility studies, uh, pilot projects as well uh, with uh, projects that are linked to circular economy in the uh, waste sector. So you could see whether there are case studies that were done for projects similar to the one you're thinking about. So this is for our support at the GMF. We have a lot of uh, knowledge. Uh, we help municipalities. So there's a lot of resources on our new website. It's been uh, updated uh, and there's a lot of case studies and guides. There's recordings for conferences and, and previous webinars, so you can find a lot of example of what has already been done, what cities uh, did. These are inspiring uh, projects. There are studies also, so this uh, is all to deal with the circular economy. There's also uh, links uh, that you have in the chat box. There's a lot of links towards uh, websites, uh, and and there's our partners, Rista Quebec, and and uh, also the uh, network for circular cities, and the Council for Circular Innovation in English. So all of this is uh, available in the chat. We can send you links and you uh, can uh, download all this and now look at whether you have questions so there were a few questions and comments already so please uh, be uh, comfortable you can write them in the language of your choice it will be in the q a box or in the chat box okay so thank you i had a comment from ron who um we <laughs> he, um, who was wondering or was stating that um, circular economy concept is not very new. And I um, agree with you, Aaron. It's uh, not a new concept for um, like reuse uh, and um, service as products, uh, systems that municipalities already try to promote on their territory. Although a uh, circular economy is like a direction where we want to go. And in that sense, it groups uh, a lot of concepts from economical development, waste management, um, municipal planning that is all under one umbrella, which is called circular economy. It has a lot of resonance in the uh, world, across the world, actually. So, um, yeah, but I agree. And it's also one of your comments, Ron, that um, it helps reduce greatly GHG emissions if we implement correctly um, circular economy. And it's uh, one of the biggest benefits for um, the transition to a low carbon economy that Canada is um, um, mandated to achieve uh, before 2050. So it's all 
we're going in the same direction. And that's one of the greatest um, language we could have in common is to talk about circular economy. And as for the question from Corina, uh, I would happily uh, discuss with uh, you. I'm the contact person for the waste uh, sector at GMF. And uh, we are in the process in the next uh, months and year to uh, revise GMF, uh, the Green Municipal Fund. And we uh, will probably uh, request what are the needs for municipalities uh, so we can adapt in the future as a fund? How can we support better municipalities for those projects that are um, part of um, yeah, circular economy, actually, or production of cleaner energy? OK, and then also in the chat, do we have other questions? I had the one question also for um, my uh, well counterpart presenter, uh, Stephanie, or even Lindsay. I was wondering if we could know how did you start talking about circular economy in your municipality? Was it among staff? Was it with municipal council? Or it was? Um, it happened to uh, from uh, residents, maybe even or businesses. I can jump ahead. Uh, for us, it was really pushed towards uh, the municipality from businesses, so uh, it might be a, a different approach. So I showed up that in '95, Chape Energy was like the first to do something like this, and after that uh, came Borea. Lisser, so all that those people basically were pushing us to be better. Um, so I'd say in our case, it was really the businesses that came first, and afterwards it was uh, the m municipality. But the mayor at the time of the first uh, uh, in in uh, 2008, the the mayor at that time, he also had the vision of doing a change for the better with the vision of uh, Chapeville Verte. So afterwards, it came from the council and then uh, the administration, for us at least. Hi. Yeah, so thank you. And and Lindsay, maybe from your side. Yeah. So from from York Region, it was it was a, a multitude of tactics. So, uh, and we first started having conversations that. Um, uh, in our master plan development back in 2013. It wasn't necessarily using the word circular economy, but a lot of the principles were part of those discussions with stakeholders in the community, um, as well as their councils. So we had done um, what we call like a traveling roadshow um, and met with each of our nine local municipalities and their council as well and their senior management. Um, when we reviewed and updated the master plan and uh, brought forward the focus and our objective to focus on the circular economy. That was also a part of another sort of round of a traveling roadshow with council to get support um, when we brought the, the updated plan uh, through council. Um, and, you know, it, so it was a combination, almost what we call like top down and, and bottom up. So that's sort of how we, we communicated and got engagement with our council. But we also did a lot of work in the community with stakeholders. And the first few years of our master plan, we established some really good partnerships in the community. Um, and we've just been able to build on that. Um, I got to give my a shout out to my staff for for really getting hands on um, in the community and establishing those partnerships. So uh, through stakeholder engagement, and now I think we're getting more traction and more momentum. But uh, we've continued the conversation and uh, uh, engage with stakeholders in our communities by um, we've you know started a fund to support community. Uh, circular economy initiatives in the community, as well as uh, we're in the process of establishing a stakeholder working group as well. Merci beaucoup. Thank you, uh, Lindsay. Merci. Um, uh, Catherine, we might have time for one more Good question. question. Um, I'm just pulling it up here in the chat. Give me one second. 
So um, the question is, do you find that these processes are easier to implement in growing cities or regions suffering from stagnation or reduced economic activity? So um, if our panelists can quickly respond to that because we um, are getting close to end of time and we have one more slide to share. Any quick comments on that? I I can sort of jump in. I think um, for York region, I mean, we are growing, um, but I do just want to say with the pandemic, it was, it had some impacts on some of our growth, sorry, some of our programming. So food waste reduction, for example, we saw a huge uh, increase in the amount of organics that was getting thrown at, at the curb because a lot of families were staying home. So there's, there's some interesting changes in behaviors that we're dealing with because of the pandemic. Um, and sometimes it works in our favor. And then the most recent, um, I would say increase in inflationary costs has also driving more conversations about repair uh, and extending the life of, of old um, items, food waste reduction, and those types of um, initiatives. J'ajouterais peut-être, là je vais en français, je ne sais pas si c'est correct, mais... Um, Is it okay if I speak French? Uh, well, it's both for us, for municipalities, uh who have uh, a declining economic activity. It, it allows them to attract uh, new uh, companies. When you talk about uh, circular economy and symbiosis, we we see that this is uh, innovating uh, on the part of the municipality. So it's, uh, it's also a, a bonus uh, when you go towards the circular economy. If you uh, have established uh, uh, communities, uh, well, people are proud of belonging to that community and, and they really appreciate this uh, concept. So it will be good for any kind of uh, municipality, no matter what the size or uh, is. To add uh, uh, to what Ellen said, we are declining in Chape, we've lost uh, population, but we see the uh, circular economy in order to be diversified, to have more resilience on the part of uh, uh, businesses. They can share resources, materials, and so on. They can collaborate together. So they are stronger with this. So for us, this is a way to maybe attract more people because it's, it's fashionable. The, this uh, concept of a circular economy. So we find a way to attract people towards Chape. So we are declining, but I think this is a uh, positive and, and, and for big municipalities as well, it's only uh, uh, positive as well. Okay, thank you so much for that. Um, and just um, in our final few minutes, I wanted to share a little bit about our upcoming webinar. Uh, the next one in the series happening September 22nd at 1 p.m. Um, it's about integrating equity, diversity, and inclusion into municipal climate action. So if you're interested in an introduction to that, um, integrating equity and diversity inclusion into municipal climate action, um, please feel free to join us September 22nd at 1 p.m. Kiana is gonna share the link to that registration for that event and the, in the chat. And right before you go, Please, if you can also complete the survey for this event, um, Kiana is sharing that. She will launch that poll momentarily to complete the survey um, as to uh, for the event. And thank you very much to all of our presenters and, and to our audience for your attention. And uh, thank you and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.